All right, good morning. Good morning, good morning. How are we doing? Hey, good morning. How are you? Good morning and welcome to Monday Morning Mojo. I love it. Thank you. My um, my friend Patty gave me the link to you. So oh, good. I'll try it out. I'm glad you're here. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to get started, and I have a few people that i got to uh, bring into the waiting room, so I'm going to do that. And there we go. Alexa, how do you move and Close that. All right, good morning, everyone. If you are here on Zoom, if you could um, mute yourselves until you have something to say, that would be awesome. Just helps with a little background noise. And I, oops, I am going to get started. So my name is Anna Gibbs. If you're joining us for the first time, I'm really excited that you're here. I am a life coach and a business coach. And for a while now, I was sharing some, well, I share a lot of things on Facebook, but especially on Monday mornings, I was sharing some things that were more, I don't know, inspirational or things that would make you stop and think. And I would call it Monday Morning Mojo. So I was doing that for a while. And then, you know, recently, there's just been so many things happening around us. It's um, been a really challenging time. And I thought that it was an opportunity to help you focus on something different than maybe what you've been focusing on and give you an opportunity to focus on something positive, focus on something inspirational, focus on uh, something that would help you, you know, move forward and, and create a uh, change in your life. So I'm really excited that I can do this. It's been great for me. It brings me a lot of joy and um, purpose. And I appreciate you all getting up early on a Monday morning to do this with me. And I'll say that that was another part of my uh, motivation to do this because I wanted to change the narrative of how you feel about Monday mornings because I think there's a lot of jokes and a lot of people who just fall into the trap of saying, oh, it's Monday, another new week. And I would rather hear, oh, it's Monday, another new week, and this is an opportunity for us to do something great. So that was another reason why I decided to do this first thing early on a Monday morning, because so goes Monday, so goes the rest of your week. And uh, so today, we're going to talk about vision. And I have, I'm going to share my screen. We're also trying something different today. I am uh, streaming live on our Facebook group. So I think that is exciting and hopefully some people will be able to catch us there too and uh, continue to join me on the live zoom though that's always great because I love your questions and I love your interactions so I appreciate you being here on this platform and so if you haven't already grabbed a little notebook or uh, something to take notes with I would suggest it and uh, we'll hear from some people maybe about what this has been like for them over the last couple weeks so today, as I said, we're going to talk about vision and, you know, without vision, we perish. So this is an opportunity for us to kind of think about where we re really want to be. And simply put, vision is a mental picture of the results that you want to achieve. So if you can see it, you can achieve it is really what we're going to talk about today. So this vision or this picture, it needs to be so clear. It needs to be so strong. It needs to really be compelling and really portray what it is that you want to achieve, whatever that might be, right? So we have different areas of our life. What are those goals? So it could be career-based. It could be health-based. It could be about your finances. It could be about um, your relationships. So whatever it is, this can't be vague. It needs to be really big. Um, and when, when your vision is big, it excites you, right? And when your vision is super clear, your mind is getting exactly the direction it needs to achieve it, right? So if your vision is fuzzy or vague 
um, then then your your subconscious mind isn't going to connect with it um, because it's not it's not giving uh, clear enough direction. And we're going to talk about that too in a minute because your brain, your subconscious especially, it you may not have known this, it thinks in pictures. It thinks in pictures. So it's important that we learn how to create this vision because it's like a movie that can play in our in our heads. The more uh, compelling the vision, the quicker and the bigger the action steps will be. And that's really what it's about. It's about creating action. So if you are looking to achieve any goal, the, the vision, that movie that you play in your mind will make it much easier for you to create a strategy to get there. So my goal is to really, as a coach, always help people get from where they are now to where they want to be, right? So that is the first step, is to kind of assess where are you now? And then to ask yourself, well, where is it that I want to be? And we need to then bridge the gap so that you can get there. And I'm sure you all have had experience doing this in your life in different areas, right? How many of you have set a goal and accomplished that goal? And you can look back and see how your life moved forward in some way. So that is where this vision becomes so powerful. So in order to help this, whoever I'm coaching, right? Um, I, in this case, it's you. <laughs> I'm coaching you. Uh, you have to know two things. So you might want to write this down. First, as I said, you have to know where you are now and where you want to be. And that has to be a really honest conversation with yourself, right? No judgment. We've talked about this before. We're not judging ourselves. We're just honestly assessing where am I now? Where do I want to be? And what does the gap look like? And then, um, you really need to describe, the second thing is describe in detail what that destination looks like, okay? So those are the first few things. Now, one tool, I always try to give you tools and you know, it's up to you. You can, you can join me on a Monday morning, just sit back and have coffee with me and listen and jot a few things down, that's cool. If you are looking to take um, advantage of the opportunity to get some free coaching, then you, I would encourage you to do the activities that we talk about and that I share on the Facebook group. So I'm sorry the quality of this picture is not so great, but I will, I will have this on the Facebook group. Uh, so this is something called the Wheel of Life. Has anyone done this before? can raise your hand either on the screen or no, this is new. Good. I'm excited about that. I wasn't sure how many people may have had this um, experience before. So the wheel of life is, a, is an assessment tool to help you create a more balanced approach. And it includes uh, several areas of your life. <clears throat> the one that I like that I'm going to upload to the Facebook group is, a, is slightly different than this one in terms of the categories. Um, so basically, though, you're going to find a lot of versions of this if you were to look for it online. Um, most of the time, it has at least five of, of the categories are always the same because they're such important parts of our life. So in my um, particular Wheel of Life that I'm going to upload, the categories, there are eight. The categories are health, friends and family, significant other, personal growth, fun and leisure, recreation, home environment, career, money. And I think I started with health. So this is going to give you an opportunity to pause and really think about one area of your life at a time. So you're going to ask yourself some basic questions, right? So I would start, let's say you want to start with health. You're going to really just look at yourself and or look, look at the areas of your life and health and assess where you feel you are at this moment. So if you can imagine the center of the wheel is zero or least satisfied, and this outer rim here is a 10, just draw a line as to you know, where you would think you are, right? Just kind of you know, judge one, two, all the way up to 10 and draw a line in that particular section across as to where you think that you, you rate at this moment, right? What is your level of satisfaction in that area of your life? Now, here are a couple of things to consider. Um, be kind, be quick. 
don't overthink this. Just really follow your gut. So, because if you overthink it, you're gonna maybe, you know, start to get into some like, well, it's not that bad kind of thing, or it's pretty good, or, you know, maybe feeling like uh, you're, you're evaluating yourself too much at, the, at that time. So you just want it to be quick and you just want to rate where you feel you are. And then you're going to go through each one of those areas and you're going to see. So if you were to imagine this is a wagon wheel, uh, if you have, um, you know, you feel like you're here and then here and then here and then here. I mean, if this was a wheel, right, if we were to round it off there, that would be a pretty bumpy ride, wouldn't you agree? So that's really where this comes into focus. So I know I've said before, balance is difficult, right? Sometimes it's more about flow, and that's another reason why we call it a wheel, because we have to flow sometimes around the circle. Yet, if we are a, an eight in one area and a two in some areas, <clears throat> excuse me, and a four, you know, that's really out of alignment, <clears throat> excuse me. So you want to really create as much balance as possible. Something else that I've shared with you before is what we focus on expands. So just be aware as you put a lot of time and energy into one area, something else is going to feel neglected. And so, you know, that is where you have to adjust because as you put more time and energy into one area and you see that it goes, you know, the, the, the feeling of satisfaction increases, something else might get lower. When I upload this to the Facebook page, you're going to see it's two pages. There's the actual wheel and then there's a second page with instructions and uh, some questions to ask yourself. I'm not going to go through all the questions right now, uh, but you know that is really where the next step comes in. So as you take a step back and look at this entire visual of your life, you'll be able to ask yourself, okay, so how do I feel about this? Are there any surprises? What would make it a 10? And there are questions that will guide you through the rest of the exercise. So I hope that you um, will, will download that and take some time. The other thing that I want to mention about the Wheel of Life, you probably want to do it every few weeks, especially if you're in the, in the process of working through a goal, right? So you want to assess your movement forward. That would be something I would recommend. So the, the Wheel of Life is a great tool to help you create some vision and growth for your life. And, you know, the other thing to remember is that at this stage of your journey, especially if you're just getting started, it's not so important to understand how you're going to get there. Really, the most important thing is to make a decision about where you want to be. Because as you make that decision and as you really sit back and create a vision with those visuals, your, as I told you before, your subconscious mind thinks in pictures. So it is going to take the imagery you're creating and it is going to really just embrace that as reality. And so what happens is we have something called a RAS or the um, reticular activating system in our brain. And so what happens is your RAS is constantly looking for data to support what it's being told to do by you. So that's why I say the, the self-talk, the things that we look at, the people we talk to, the images, all of that is creating programming for our RAS. So our RAS is searching around us all the time for data to pull in that supports whatever it is that you've been telling it. So as you create this vision for your life and literally practice visualization and you create imagery that represents the goals that you want, your RAS is taking that in and saying, well, that's our reality. And believe it or not, on a subconscious level, you're going to see change start to take effect. You're going to think different. You're going to act different. And so it literally starts to pull. Some people, you know, we call this the law of attraction, right? This is the ability to... Uh, create, um, you know, uh, manifestation and create the, the results that we want. And it's not magic. It's not snapping your fingers, creating a vision, and suddenly it appears. What it is, is that it's lining up everything. It's putting your thoughts, it's putting your images, your, your self-talk, your activities, your actions, all in alignment, your beliefs, so that now suddenly you're moving through life in a much more purposeful way and opportunity starts to show up like a magnet. 
And because you're paying attention, because you're aware of what it is that you want, you're able to connect to those opportunities. See, there are opportunities around you now that you're not even noticing because your RAS isn't picking it up because it's not matching the dialogue you have in your mind or the images you're creating in your mind. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So this is where the opportunity comes in now to put everything in alignment. And it starts with the visualization because we always have this inner GPS working for us. Right, and our inner GPS is guiding us. So we just have to put everything now in alignment. And once you're clear about what you want and you keep your mind constantly focused on it, um, you know, that's really how things will keep showing up to, to move you in the direction of what you want. So I encourage you not to limit your vision in any way either. Create a vision that is as big as you can imagine because if you're thinking it, it's possible. So never try to edit your, your vision. You know, I'm sure you've heard about this before anyway. According to Psychology Today, mental practices like visualization is, it, it not only increases motivation in athletes, but research has shown that this is just as effective as physical practice. So imagine what that could do for you in your life, right? So, so that's something I want you to really chew on for a sec. So remember, do not limit your vision. Um, and I love this, this quote here. If you limit your choices only to what seems possible or reasonable, you disconnect yourself from what you truly want. And all that is left is a compromise. So your visions are telling you something. Your daydreams are speaking to you. It's time to flex that muscle around your imagination and really start to think about what it is that you want. All high achievers in our world know this to be true, right? They see the world from a very different perspective. They see unlimited opportunity. They believe anything is possible. And you know what's interesting too about high achievers? Not only do they believe that anything is possible, they believe that they are a part of that. They, they believe that they can create anything. They believe that uh, they have a, a willing, they're willing to participate in the world's pursuit of anything being possible. Uh, so they really think that they're an integral part of creating change and, and creating opportunity. So you have to ask yourself, do I think like a high achiever? All right, so let's break this down uh, real quick. So visualization. Uh, it's an act of creating a compelling and vivid picture in your mind. And what I'm asking you to do is to create a compelling and vivid picture of what you want your life to look like. This is what we mean by saying you co-create your life with the divine, that you are the master of your destiny. It is time for you to create vision and it will allow your brain to kick in to achieve more. It's really powerful, but it's underutilized, right? So it's time to really flex the muscle. So it's gonna give you this accelerated movement towards your goals, right? Because visualization will activate creative powers in your subconscious mind, right? I used to say like a while ago, I used to say things like, I'm not creative. That is not true. We are very, as human beings, we are very creative. So maybe I choose to um, display my creativity and exercise my creativity in different ways than you do. So for instance, I'm not an artist, but I can be very creative when it comes to creating programs and systems around learning and education and coaching and right. So, so you have to find where is your creativity, but we are all creative beings. And so visually, visualization, as I said before, creates this magnet to really attract people because people bring opportunity. Visualization will attract other resources, uh, opportunities that will help you achieve your goal. So when you visualize, it's important that you visualize your goals as already being in your life, as already happened, it's in, in present tense. So if your goal is to lose weight, it's important you visual, visualize yourself in that body, in those clothes. <clears throat> If your goal is to um, change careers, visual, visualize yourself in that career doing the work every day, right? Because it, what happens now is 
when you assess where you are at this moment, and then you create a visualization of being somewhere else further along in your goals, it creates conflict in your subconscious mind, right? Because your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between reality and fantasy or dreaming or visualization. So if you're here, but you're dreaming here, your subconscious mind says, we have a problem. There's this, there's, there's, we're out of alignment. And whatever you think and whatever you believe is true. So your subconscious mind will kick in to bring this up here. So that's why visualization is powerful because it will create opportunities that you didn't even know existed. So if you wanna prove this right, I encourage you to do a couple things, right? Start with the wheel of life exercise. The other thing that you might want to do is uh, create a journal and write down some goals, right? So the process of, of being able to, the process of, of achieving success starts with how you think, right? And how you think is what you'll see. So now it's, it's time to make some decisions about what are the goals in your life. So after you do that wheel of life exercise, write down a few things that you want to work on. One thing actually in each area, not 10. <laughs> one thing, one thing in each area that will move you up in terms of that, um, you know, the rating of, of how satisfied you feel. So as you sit and write out these goals, um, you know, then it's time to create the visualization. So let's say one of your goals is to live in a beach house which is, I'm gonna tell you something else. I give you permission to think in terms of material things. I give you permission to dream big, to visualize big. If you are thinking it, it's something that you must want to attract into your life, okay? So let's say you're dreaming or visualizing about living in a beach house. Then as you visualize, you literally will need to make time for yourself throughout the day to do this couple minutes. You can start your day this way. You can do this whenever you need a little break throughout the day. At the end before bed is powerful. And I want you to create that mind movie in your head. Where is your beach house specifically? Where do you want to live? What town? What view are you seeing when you look out your windows? What, what does the kitchen look like? What color is the wall going to be? Where will your bedroom be? Uh, what color is your, your comforter going to be? I want you to think about it all. What does it look like to walk out your house towards the ocean? What does it sound like? What will your day look like? When you create that compelling movie in your mind and you visualize that a couple of times a day, believe me, your brain says we need to have this. There's, no, there's something out of alignment. This is important to you. We think about it all the time, but we're not there. So let's create a way to get there. Another way to do this, if you feel, so some of us, I, I've done um, lots of dream boards and vision boards, whatever you want to call a vision board uh, in my time. And now I, I, I am going to do one now because I feel like, uh, being in my home office as much as I have been with these recent uh, developments, it would be good to have it here again. Um, for me, I am now someone who I can create a, a really powerful vision in my mind. I can, I, I've gotten much more comfortable with manifestation, yet for years I did the pictures, and I think this is great and important for anyone. And for those of you who have kids, what a great, I wish I had had the knowledge I have now when I was raising my kids when they were really little. Um, because this is such a great activity for you to do, especially, you know, now that we're getting into summer, maybe you want to start your morning like this or at one evening and do this as a family project. So um, the vision board is simple, right? You're just going to cut out images of the things that you want to have or attract into your life. And remember, your subconscious thinks in pictures, so really more pictures than words. Some words and phrases are fine because you want to you want to improve your self-talk. Yet you want to make sure it's not more words than than pictures because you really need the pictures. And so cut out all the pictures and or print them from online that represent the things you want and the things that are important to you. So this is not about reflecting your perfect life today. This is about reflecting the perfect life you're growing into. 
So, you know, again, if it's, you know, about a certain house that you want to have, a car, vacation, is it health? You know, what are the image that the images that really represent that for you? And then the other thing about this is once you create the vision board, it needs to be somewhere you're going to see it all the time. This is not something you stick in a corner. So if you can hang it up on the wall, in your bedroom, in your office, like, you know, this is where this is serious business now, right? Because we're creating the life we want to live. So it's got to be, you know, visual and it's got to be connected to you and it's got to be available to you throughout the day. Um, so just to wrap things up, you know, I think that we underestimate the power that we have to really create the life we want to live. I, I believe that uh, life is happening for us. It's not happening to us. And we have the ability to really navigate and create whatever life it is that we want to live. Um, and, and the harsh reality, though, sorry, I have some background noise here. The harsh reality, though, is that if you don't create the vision of your life, someone else will. If you're not in control of your decisions and where you want to go, then you will fall victim to being told what to do, whether it's by a partner, a friend, a a, an employer, the TV news, right? Whatever it is, you are going to feel powerless and you're going to be told, you're going to, you're going to accept whatever someone tells you your path in life should be. So as you break free of that and really make decisions, everything starts with the decision. If you make decisions about what you want, right? By first assessing maybe with the wheel of life tool, and then you create those goals and then you pair it with the visions of what it's going to look like, your subconscious mind is going to stand up and rally and say, okay, let's do it. Let's make this happen. So the, if you choose to do the activities uh, for this week, I would say the activities would be the wheel of life exercise for sure. And answer all the questions on the second page, which, and, and give yourself some time because you want to really, you know, get into uh, getting some clarity around where you want to go. And then the other thing I would suggest is, is do a vision board. I think that would be a great fun exercise. You can do that, you know, like I said, early in the morning with your coffee, you can do it in the evening with a glass of wine. And it is so liberating to really get into that creative thought around what you want your life to look like. So I will post uh, those things on the Facebook page. And if, you know, it, whether you've been following along or not, there, all the information, all of the past Mojo sessions and um, action steps and activities, it's all there. There's information in the file section. So if you're doing the work, um, make sure that you're building, right? You're creating some strategy. I, I've tried to be a little purposeful about how we're doing this. And if you haven't done all the activities and you want to look back and start working on them, uh, you know, this is your chance. This is your time. And this is an opportunity for you to really say that wherever you are in your life, uh, you acknowledge and accept with gratitude where you are. And, and you also are now really excited about what comes next. So I, I see that we are at 8 o'clock or maybe even 8.02. And I appreciate all of you joining me. Who has any kind of aha or any, um, whoops, I'm gonna stop sharing. Who has uh, any feedback for us this morning? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Was this helpful? Michelle, good morning. Hi, Anna, how are you? Good. <clears throat> so uh, two things. One, I just can't thank you enough. You inspire me so much every week and I, I really look forward to these. So, I think just you're so positive and having that voice ring through my head all week, really, it really sticks with me. And I just thought you should know that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, is it good to share your vision board with other people and talk it yeah. over? And A hundred percent. So the reason why that's important, a couple of things. One, um, it's accountability. You yeah. put it out there into the universe that this is what you're working on and you will attract people to you that want to encourage you. Now, I will say you may also find some people in your life um, could try to talk you out of your vision, okay? Mm -hmm. I didn't go into that too much today. Yeah. However, it is worth discussing quickly that you have to be prepared for that. 
right? So you have to be really solid in this is where I'm going. And even though I don't know how yet, uh, this is really where I want to be. And remember, when people try to talk you out of something, usually, it, most times, it's not because they're just trying to be mean and unsupportive. Right. There's some kind of fear there, right? Because your goal or vision represents something in, in them that they're not connecting with, right? So they're, trying to pr they're probably trying to keep you safe. Right. It's like the crabs in the bucket, which I may have shared on one of these before, right? If you have a big bucket of crabs, one of them starts climbing out, right, to get freedom. Mm -hmm. And the other crabs don't follow. They actually pull him back down because they think they're helping him. They think they're keeping him oh. safe in the bucket. <laughs> Right. right, the comfort yeah. zone. So just keep that in mind that some there may be a couple of people who just don't understand it, or your your bravery and your courage about where you want to go in life is a little scary to them because they're not doing that for themselves. So they're going right. to try to keep you safe. But anyway, it is a, it is great accountability. Share it, and I believe when you share your vision boards or or your goals with other people, you give people permission to do the same thing when they're ready. You inspire, like, I appreciate all the wonderful things you just said, but you inspire people too. Mm, you just don't you. know it. Or maybe there's a way that you can inspire them more. Right. By sharing it, you'll inspire them too. So I, I think that's a good, good, uh, good question. Really good question. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have anything to say? I always like to give you guys a chance and I love hearing your thoughts or feedback. Who's going to do a vision board? Karen, do I see a vision board behind you? Oh, you're on mute, honey. Good, you're on. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. It is a vision board behind me. That's not mine, though. Mine, that's the one behind me. I have a vision board. I share an office, so my vision board is in front of me. So oh, good. One, one of the things that I struggle with when I did my vision board is that um, I, I just put things out there, and I'm finding that I'm not obtaining everything. And it's frustrating. Tell me a little bit more, if you don't mind. You know, before you do that, I'm going to say this. If anyone needs to jump off, they can. I always stay on a little longer for this little conversation. Uh, and, and hopefully you don't mind me recording it. You know, that frustration is um, an intention that's out of whack. Think about that for a minute, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever we're frustrated about, it's usually something we intended to do that we're off track on. And, yeah. and I say that because I've also tried to teach this group and others that I coach to be clear about what's in our control and what's not in our control. So there's no point in getting frustrated about anything that's not in our control. So that's just a whole other conversation that we can do another morning about letting go, right? Uh, yeah, if it is within our control and we're frustrated about it, it's probably an intention that went out of whack. So Karen, I'm happy to talk to you anytime you want. You guys can, you know, reach out to me. Um, but if you have more to share on this, you know, platform, you know, feel free to do that. But if you'd like to talk a little bit offline, I can help you. I would like that. Thanks, Anna. I'll give you a call. I'll, I'll reach out to you this week. Yeah, please do. We can chat. And, you know, a few people have done that now. So I, I would love to, you know, support you. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. And listen, everyone's doing the best they can in any given moment. Times are weird. It's just different, right? But it's also what you make it in your own mind. Like it could be weird and it could also be really like an, the, the most opportunistic time of our lives. Lori, did you want to say something? I saw you come off mute. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I feel the same way that Karen does. So I just want you to know that you're not alone in that. And I think a lot of times I most days I, I feel I feel that way that like I just don't know how I'm gonna get there or um you know I just don't feel like I'm doing enough to do what I want to do and um and I think that that's something that we all share and so we have to kind of give it a voice because I think it's our internal thing that we all kind of do and I think for me the more that you're brave enough to say that out loud the more you not only help yourself but you help everybody else so i just want to say that that was very i'm very i'm very appreciative that you said something because it really means a lot to me too because it's something i struggle with that's a beautiful thing you just said thank you Lori. yeah it's so okay. true and and you know um last week i did something on um 
overcoming our emotions and, and understanding our emotions. And I don't know if you saw it, Karen, but that may be something to watch that, you know, there's some tools in there too. And, you know, I think another thing is just um, in terms of emotions, remember it is the, it is what it is. Like we can't judge it either, right? This is not about saying, oh my gosh, why am I so frustrated? Why do I feel this way? No, just you, you are, you're feeling what you're feeling. Then though it is about, okay, so why am I feeling this way? You know, where's it coming from? Is this something that is really truly affecting me personally or is it just me being a Velcro right now to the world? And, uh, and, and, and that, that could be for a lot of us, especially those of us who are more, um, what we call an empath, right? Who are more empathetic to what's happening around us and sensitive, it's tough because you can feel like you're just this big piece of Velcro and everything's just like sticking. Yet we have to really discern which is kind of drawing a line in the sand to say, you know, that's not my problem. That, you know, now there are things happening in this world right now that may, that inspire us to take action. And that's great. See, but action is not on the same side of the paper as frustration. So sometimes just taking some action is, is a way to level that off as well. It was awesome. Thank you for sharing, Karen. Anyone else have anything they want to say? Uh, anything about this morning? Is uh, I always I trust there's always someone who got exactly what they needed when they needed it. How? Just one quick thing. How has this experience been? A lot of you I see have been with me each week. I think this is um, a month now that we're doing it. About I don't know. <laughs> Uh, how has this been for you guys? Are you finding that you're getting some stuff that is helpful and valuable? And can we encourage more people to focus on this stuff? Good. All right. Well, if there's anything I can do for you, reach out. And if you do your wheel of life and when you do your vision board, I would love for you to share it and put it up on the Facebook group and uh, inspire someone else to do the same because I know we all have the power to do that. So um, my uh, deepest gratitude for you being here today. Thank you so much and have an awesome day. Thanks, Anna. You too. Thanks. Take care. Thank you very much. Very Thank helpful. You. All right, Jill. Take care. All right. Be well, Anna. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.